Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Yes. Good to be with you. Absolutely. Here we are. Yeah. It's uh, Sunday. It is. Uh, September 17th. Just saw that on my calendar right over past Rushi's shoulder there. So I would not have known if the calendar was there. I really would have had a struggle. So anyways, good to be with you guys. And we're talking about Joseph today. We're talking about forgiveness mm -hmm. today. Talking about uh, Romans 14. Our weaker brother. Yeah. That's a lot of good stuff here. And uh, some weak brothers humble themselves before yeah. Joseph. Just like he said they would in his dreams. Mm. So um, we'll jump into it. You got the uh, collect for today? I do. O oh God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that what we ask in faith we may obtain, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're in Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 uh, through 21, so I'll read it for us, and then you could tell us. What does this mean? When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So I'm uh, going back all the way into Jacob blessing in 49 and um you know what's no you know what's kind of missing what what the brothers say yeah yeah isn't that interesting yeah, yeah. maybe this was off script he uh, yeah you know uh, off off camera he said this to them could be yeah yeah uh, th that's always been a curious note from this text is like did he really mm -hmm. say this to them? And why didn't he just say it to Joseph? Right. Why relay it to the brothers to relay it to Joseph? Hey, Dad said you got to forgive us. Uh -huh. Right before he died, his final words were, forgive us. So, forgive us. Right? And, and, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of kind of what's going on here, right. I think. Yep. Uh, you know, and that's one of those things that it being omitted, it being absent, really drives the point home, I think, though, that... These brothers, they're afraid of the ramifications of what they did. Mm -hmm. um, most of us know, we'll do the brief, you know, 30 second recap. Joseph angers his brothers. His brothers are jealous on a, uh, jealous of him. Because uh, Joseph is Jacob's favorite son. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that aspect of it. And Joseph to be fair, isn't exactly endearing himself to his brothers when he says, hey, you guys are all going to bow down and serve me. Yeah. Um, they seek to kill him. Reuben intervenes and says, well, what about just selling him into slavery? To our cousins. Yeah. Yeah. We, we honor uh, we honor Reuben for his dedication by naming the greatest sandwich uh, after him. <laughs> uh, mm. Um. I lost my train of thought. That, I, made, I tell that made, joke all the time. You made me and think that, about You're the lunch. first person who's actually ever laughed at it. You made me think about um, lunch, though, so... Uh, and then famine hits the land. The brothers go to Egypt. Little do they know, Joseph has uh, been as a son to Pharaoh, it is one of the rulers of the land. He saves them. Uh, we get the whole reu reunion. Whoa, 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 whoa. You forgot about Potiphar's wife. You oh, forgot no, about the like dreams I said, we're doing the 30-second, okay, you know, yeah. okay, pertinent ahead. to this aspect of it. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. He forgives his brothers, welcomes them back, brings them in, and the people of Jacob live in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And now Jacob's dead. And yeah. they've taken him back, buried him with his fathers, uh, and the brothers fear that, hey, the peace was kept... For dad's sake, but now he's gone. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's that's um, and, and that's an interesting note that now he's gone because uh, a notable thing within their supposed words of their father mm -hmm. that they're speaking, um, they say in verse seventeen, and now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. They're basically like, hey, you, our father's dead, but our God's not dead. Right. Which I think is a really cool yeah. testimony here to say, God is um, always mm -hmm. going to live, and so they call on God's name here and there supposed words from their father um but yeah it's 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 a powerful thing and, and it shows you the 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 power of a burdened conscience it shows you the power of guilt in mm -hmm. your life it shows the power mm -hmm. of shame and fear of retribution and um joseph gives us an example of jesus yeah. we um yesterday for our staff devotions i was reading um luther and our ministry's devotion on uh this text and it talked about the the burdened conscience and the unburdening of the conscience sometimes that comes about as a, as a result of death. Um, you know, death is a traumatic event. I, the understatement of the century, I'm sure that sometimes in the stress caused by the death of a loved one, things come out, things that have been buried come out. I, I remember on my vicarage seeing that, you know, axes that are hatchets that had been buried got dug up as they were burying their their father and it's you, you see the the stress of the situation and all that it brings all this to, to light and so the brothers you know maybe joseph is going to remember what we did to him as if he could ever forget that i think yeah. that's the, the the thing that's so wild to me is they're like well maybe maybe he'll remember what we did mm -hmm. and the atrocities that we committed on against him and they they appeal not to joseph but to jacob still and i think that's what's interesting is they don't think they can be forgiven of their own mm -hmm. but rather for the sake of jacob your father forgive us or and they also don't think uh joseph would do it of his own volition mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, and which it's, I don't know. It's an interesting thing to think about, you know, because we, we forgive as we are forgiven. Right. So, um, honestly, of our own volition, there's, I mean, there's that reality that we forgive. We love because we're loved by God. Uh, but, but yeah, there's this unexpected thing that Joseph's never going to forgive us unless right. we invoke the name of Dad, um, unless we invoke the name of God, which yeah. they do here. And, um, and, uh, and I love Joseph's response, though, because yes. he, he just weeps. Yeah. He's like, Really, guys? Really? Mm -hmm. And and it leads to his almost concluding words. Um, this this was God's plan, basically. Yeah. is what he says. What you intended for evil, I or God intended for good. Mm -hmm. It's just such a a powerful a powerful confession of who our God is that that he works through all things. And yes, even the things that aren't obviously good, mm -hmm. he can, he repurposes and uses for his, his goals. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and before that, um, you know, his, his brothers do bow before him. Mm -hmm. Verse 18, as you mentioned, and um, we both mentioned, touched on it already, but this is like literally the reenactment, the, yeah. the realization, the fulfillment of Joseph's dream. Um, and that one of the fulfillments of Joseph's dreams, because there's multiple times where his mm -hmm. brothers bow before him, and even his father bows before him, you know, when he realizes what his son has become. So, right. so that that dream is again echoing here in the background. That that and 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 it shows that what we're talking about that God yeah. has had this plan. God knew what was going to happen, uh, but but um, but Joseph's words um, don't do not fear. For am I in the place of God? Um, he, he, he literally is like, this is up to God, right? And, which is th the perfect way to think about forgiveness. And, mm -hmm. and I think of all the great things in this passage, you know, the emotional, you know, you, we get this, this is like a drama unfolding. This is like the final scene of a, of a sitcom, a drama where you're just like, oh my gosh, what is it, what is he going to do? And, um, but, but this, this gem here, am I in the place of God? And, and that's a great question for us to ask whenever we get this burden of, forgiveness opportunity right. which can be a burden yeah and but think about the burden that our lord has borne in in that right. and that's that's 
the greatest thing about I think about the Joseph story is the parallels between Joseph's life and and Christ's life. Yeah. Did, you, did you read uh, 1517's notes on the lectionary? The one this week's really good. I think there's like 25 points that the author makes oh, from, yeah. from Joseph's yeah. life and then um, parallels them to Jesus' life. And I didn't read it as in-depth as I normally do. Yeah, I, but... I didn't go through the list exhaustively, but I knew there was all these parallels in Joseph mm-hmm. and Jesus' life. And But um, if you go to 1517.org, it's called Craft of Preaching. You can see uh, behind the curtain some of our resources yeah. that we use as preachers, but they're great stuff to read as you consider these texts. But... It, it was, I think it was something like 25 points of Sounds comparison right, yeah. between their lives. And it's just, it'll as I continue my sermon prep, I plan to go through that just to see because those those nuggets are great. But but those that the life of Joseph points to Christ. I mean, he mm-hmm. was literally thrown into a pit. Christ was thrown into a tomb. He was, um, you know, raised to glory in, right. in Egypt. Yeah. And so is Christ in, in everlasting glory. But mm-hmm. it, all this is good stuff for us to see Christ... Um, foreshadowed here um what do you call it a, a prototype of christ yeah, right yeah that that joseph plays for us mm-hmm. here and I, I think that 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 question you know if, am i in the place of god we we would do well to, to remember that because that's going to come into play in the gospel lesson mm-hmm. and it it plays maybe not as obviously in the, the epistle as well yeah. um but Especially in the gospel, so we're going to see what happens when we answer that with "Yeah, I am," and I am in the place yeah, of God. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But um, you want me to forgive you? Who's forgiven me? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's mm-hmm. what. Well, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, and and then to maybe get to one of those points that you were um, alluding to with the the, the the comparisons between Christ and, and Joseph is Joseph doesn't just forgive his brothers, but he also provides for their their little ones. Mm-hmm. He provides for the generations um, that come after. Um, you know, it's kind of the thing where it's, you know, the sins of the father, I remember, but the, uh, I will forgive, or I will remember the righteous to the thousandth generation kind yeah. of thing, that, like, sin is forgotten and righteousness and grace is remembered throughout the eons yep yeah yeah and and, um maybe one last point before we move to yeah romans is immediately after this uh joseph um one of the contrasts with jesus happens as joseph dies yeah um and so joseph very much plays a savior role for his family um in bringing them out of the famine and into the the blessed land of of Egypt, you know, where there was blessings of provisions, and um, but but yet yeah, Joseph died, and so he mm-hmm. we're 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 still left waiting for more, and um and it's interesting when you think about the book of Genesis as a whole that Abraham was promised to be the father of a great nation, and that um, that his name would be made great, and so Joseph is definitely one of those great names that comes from the line yeah. of Abraham, but we're left wanting more, and so right. So Joseph dies, and um, oh, I have one more uh, that I just, I it just came to me. Before I'll allow we, it. Uh, the restoration of brothers, you know, I think it's interesting. Um, obviously, he was dead, and that's what sparked all of this before he could see this necessarily. Um, but if anyone knew about the restoration between brothers sinning against each other, it was Jacob. If you think mm. about, yeah, uh, with the the seventh graders every year, I, I, I go through these different events, these different scriptural accounts that are are maybe less than familiar. And we talked about Jacob and, and Esau and the stealing of the blessing, and that's been on my mind. Um, you know, talking about that, and it's you realize, yeah, Jacob may have very well said these things because you think about his whole life. You know, from the moment yeah. of, of Isaac's death until oh, so now you're was, coming back around to say I don't know. <laughs> I I'm just I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna stake anything on this, but it would make sense that he could say something like this because he had seen the power of forgiveness. The power of forgiveness. Brothers. Yeah. 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 No, that's good, and yeah, that is a cool uh, cool realization is just to see the messy family tree between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, yeah, Abraham uh, pimped out his wife. Um, Isaac and 
did the same. Yeah, they they just have these awful stories, and and, it, and they're and so through it all. Joseph's words of what you meant for evil, God brought about good yeah. through, and not that we should say evil is good and pursue it, because God's mm-hmm. going to make good out of the evil I do. But we we realize often in hindsight how God brought us through those difficult things that we've either brought upon ourselves or had happen to us and, and brings blessings through them. Right. Yeah, so let's go to the the weak in faith portion of Romans, um, uh, Romans 14, right? Yep. I'll let you read it because I don't know how far to go. So we go 1 through 12. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but do not quarrel over opinions. One be- person believes he may eat anything while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats eats in honor of the Lord. Since he, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you... Why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of himself to God. Amen. Yeah, this is a, this is a good, um, like the forgiveness talk, these are like tools for living the Christian life, or, yeah. or descriptions of living the Christian mm-hmm. life. And, and um and, and I, I love that opening passage because, it, I, for me, I think it's a very evangelistic um, approach right. to life. Um, that if somebody's weak in the faith, or take it a step further, if somebody is not even of the faith, yeah. um, be a part of their life, but not for the sake of argument. Um, yeah, and, don't. And, and, I, mm-hmm. and I think that's one of the, the things that we... I, I think apologetics is really good when you're able to defend the faith, explain the faith, right. and make a case for the faith. Those are all great things to be able to do. But with that with that power comes great responsibility. Because yeah. you've got to know when to use it. And I think a lot of times uh, Christians get um, rub people the wrong way and get mis, misheard or ignored yeah. or even attacked um, because we lead with the punch and instead yeah. of leading with our arms open to say, hey, we're in this world together. We right. all need the same thing. Mm-hmm. And and that's not an argument. That's not quarreling. That's uh, commiserating. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Paul's really kind of alluding to not having to be fixed before you're part of the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Like That's how I'm reading this, is, is you don't come to church already fixed and ready, but you come to church to, to be fixed. Mm. You know, that um, we're all, to an extent broken, Mm -hmm. sinful, unclean. We all need the same thing. Yeah. And if we, if we seek out, if we see coming to this place with, with quarrels and arguments, we're not helping ourselves, much less helping our brother. Um, you know, and, and, oh, I'm better because I do this or that. All you're doing is, is building walls where, Mm -hmm. where there should be, be bridges. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, so the, the the things that are here, one person, it's dietary things, mm-hmm. it's it's um, calendar things, and, and I was thinking about the calendar things, I was thinking of um, our Seventh-day Adventist yeah. brothers, I was like, this would be a really great passage to discuss with them, you know, just mm-hmm. to say, you know, one person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike, each one should be fully convinced in his own mind, and they are. They are. They, they are. are fully convinced in their uh-huh. own mind that we should worship on Saturdays, and Okay, all right. Christ is the Lord, and um, they they believe Jesus died for their sins. So, God bless them, and may He. And uh, that's it's just an interesting thing. And and so, what difference does it make? It is I think in the back of my mind, it's a good summary for this uh, that uh, Paul's talking about here is: is it a salvation issue? If it is a salvation issue, 
then we might not want to quarrel, but we'll do yeah. what we have uh, right before the gospel reading for today. You know, go to your brother in sin and, and mm -hmm. tell him. Um, and but uh, but here it's you know let it be if it doesn't have to to do with the the things that are of eternal importance. Right. Yeah, and I, I think that's uh, it's kind of the the adiaphora, right? The, yeah, the right. scripture neither condones nor condemns, so let it be. Or things that it has condemned or condoned, it sometimes shifts in light yeah. of Christ and what right. it's done. You know, the as dietary as restrictions is, is one Dietary thing. restrictions and the, the Sabbath day observances, mm -hmm. those those things have new definitions in Christ. Yeah. As um, he, he thus declares all food to be clean. Yeah. Which, thanks be to God. Well, um, and, all right, I, let's go down this rabbit hole because it's fun okay. to talk about this with like, okay. uh, the this is sometimes used as like, either justification for, like, not eating meat or, you know, condemning people who don't eat meat. This passage? Yeah. yeah. I've okay. seen that. I've seen it yeah. done. I, To be honest, I'm sure when I was younger, uh, was snarky. Still am snarky. Uh, <laughs> and, uh... I wonder what snarky Pastor Rushi was like. Pa snarky pre-Pastor Rushi was like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, uh, a brat. That's, I think, the politically, okay. uh gentle way to, to say it. Um, but that's not really what's going on here. So my understanding of this, how I've kind of always seen this, this taken and, and the research I've done into it as well is, um, specifically in regards to meat that was sacrificed at, at the, the temples in Rome it was mm -hmm. kind of the, the meat that was on the market was, sacrificed at the Roman temples. And so there were some in the Roman church who said, we're going to not eat this because it's been sacrificed to an idol. Mm -hmm. And there were some who said, well, it's fine because it's food. And, and they were, do you, I mean, do you have any, any information I may be missing on that? Or, or is it, this is what I'm saying, sound no, it sounds congruent good. with what you've... No, it sounds good. It's, it's definitely... Um, definitely something that we we can rejoice that there's not this we don't have to take an inventory of our diet according yeah. to God's regulations for food it's you know and I mean it just makes sense I mean not to get too down the track of nutritional science but mm -hmm. it just makes sense to um, there there are things you should eat and shouldn't eat times right. you should eat things shouldn't eat things and, yeah. and, and I think it just I mean to pan it out towards our life we're, we're blessed by God to have the freedom to mm -hmm. to do things knowing all things come from him it's his provision and um and yeah so it's it's a it's a great thing that we don't have to it is kind of interesting because I do a lot of thinking about this uh with the the dietary restrictions that God put on the people of Israel and how they make a lot of sense to the context as well you know uh, as I tell the, the students, you know, if you're in the desert and someone says, hey, do you want this bag of shrimp? The answer is no. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't eat shrimp if you're in the desert. Yeah. It's just is. a bad idea. Uh, that would be an interesting thing. I wonder if anybody's ever cataloged. I have to crack a window here. It's getting warm. If, if anybody's ever cataloged the, um, you know, the things that science has revealed yeah. to be good sense um, or, or, you know, reasonable things that got instituted mm -hmm. Um, through his laws to them, and I, I, there's definitely a number of issues. There's there's that, and then um, I always point, you know, the, then they always ask, well, what about like pork? You know, why, why that? Because you pigs live in the desert. I'm like, yeah, pigs live in the desert, but you know what, pigs eat anything. And until like probably that bag of shrimp you threw yeah, away. Yeah, probably that bag of shrimp you threw away. <laughs> and until pretty recently, uh, pig was like the number one way to catch foodborne illnesses, mm -hmm. and like well, it's always it's always amazing how God gives these these laws, and it's not just for those reasons that that He gives these laws, but they have that secondary benefit of. All right, you know, yeah. this is also for your protection and for your safety, right? You know, much like the commandments are given to set the people apart, but also to protect them and and guide them. And mm -hmm. um, sorry, not to get too far into no, the weeds. No, no, I, I think that's good because I. I I think it goes back to what I was saying. I think it's heart and core of this is what difference does it make? And the thing that makes all the difference comes at the end of verse four. Uh, he will, uh, 
it, for the Lord is able to make him stand. Right. It's, it's, it's up to the Lord. At verse 8, uh, verse 7 and 8, For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. So that's yeah, what makes all the right. difference. And then and then at the end, uh, for uh, verse 10, For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. That's where the difference is made. Because of mm -hmm. Christ, we're able to stand before the judgment seat yeah. of God and, and not have to run from the judgment seat of God. And, and um, each of us will give an account of himself to God, which is kind of an interesting script-flipping situation because yeah. it's all like, don't worry about these things. Don't, don't get stuck in the details, bogged down on the details. But God's going to ask you what you did. It's kind of well, like a, ooh. Well, and I think it's the, that gets to the point I made earlier about the, am I in the place of God? You know, mm -hmm. That's really what the accounting that's going to be asked of, did you act like me or did you act in honor of me? Yeah. You know, did you, did you think that you were, were me and were passing judgment where judgment was not yours to pass? Or were you acting in alignment with the attributes of God? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, so, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. And, and that's that's the difference that's made, is is where are you bowing, where are you confessing, right. who are you letting be the judge. Yeah. And um, if you're standing in the way of the judge in order to take the place of the judge, then you're going to be judged. And yeah, and, um, yeah that's this is it's good stuff. And it, it is amazing how um, this fits. This is one of those Sundays where if we... We talk about this all the time when we're doing these uh, these three three lesson uh -huh. summaries. Is this actually fits pretty right. well with the other ones? Yeah. And, and it's all about forgiveness. It's all about God mm -hmm. being God, and we are not. Yeah. Uh, you all had to deal with the fact that I did the prep, and I couldn't find a way to to just tangent about uh, dietary restrictions in my uh, my sermon. So I like, if, I, if I did the I did the prep, it's getting it's getting talked about. <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. Let's go to uh, Matthew 18. Let's do that. And uh, this is, I think this is one of my favorite parables. I, I don't know if I've said that before or if it's just this year it's striking me as uh, a great parable because um, I, I love the simplicity of it. Mm -hmm. And I love the beauty of the the picture of the, the forgiving master. Right. Um, so... Um, I'll, I'll read it here for us. It's uh, 18, verse 21 through 35, all the way through the end of 18. So, Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, do not say, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and all that he had in payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in his anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. Smile. <laughs> Jesus loves you. What did uh, what, uh, Pastor Lutz... Uh, this, this is, is the, the gospel, gospel of the Lord. Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, and, and um, just to put it in context, and this is something, uh, I did minimal prep this week, I don't know if you can tell or not, but anyways, I, yeah, the, the passages right before this um, are about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. we, we, get, uh, we get the uh, um, the parable of the lost sheep, um, you know, that, that God's love is so great that he'll go after the one, leaving 99 behind to find that one. So that's there. Um, it's not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones yeah. should perish powerful statement 
But then it goes uh, to um, what if somebody does sin against you? Yeah. If your brother sins, go and tell him his fault. Um, and then, uh, so number one, go and tell him his fault. But if he doesn't listen, take one or two others along with you. And then if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. So, so you get three strikes there. Yeah. And, and so I, it was pointed out in the, the, the thing I was reading here that, uh, that it goes from forgiveness, no one should perish, God doesn't desire anyone should perish, now you get three opportunities. And then, and then so Peter goes and says, but, but how many times? Right, he's got that ready. You yeah. know, that's the thing, is it's like he's got that how ready. How many times do I go to my Seven, brother? right? You know, he's got that, like, yeah. he, he's not just pulling stuff out. You know, he's like, okay, you know, he's counting up, you know, I think, okay. How many times has James cut me off in traffic? You know, how many times has, has John stepped on my on my sandal as we've been walking? Or argued about being the greatest. Right, yeah. You know, that's probably more likely, but, you yeah. Know. Yeah, and, and so Jesus says, no, it's not seven times, guys. It's only three. No, he doesn't say that. No. He says it's seven times 70, which is um, it's a, it's a number that's got historical significance. I think it's uh, in um, uh, Genesis uh, 4. Um when uh, it's like Lamech, uh, let's see, I, let me find it here, verse 22, uh, oh shoot, there's not a cross reference um, Are you talking with, with... The the retribution. Yeah, the retribution would be upon uh, those who, uh, those who struck Cain, vengeance would be sought sevenfold. Y- um, yeah, and... and uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I want to find this real quick. I should have, should have uh, prepared a little bit better. Uh, yeah, so seven, Genesis 4, verse 15, Then the Lord said to him, Not so, if anyone kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And uh, so, so there it's a, a powerful uh, connection to this here, mm-hmm. that, that we have this seven times seven. And I, I think there's actually something in the Hebrew. I, I should have looked that up before I brought this up. Oh no no no! It's uh, verse twenty four. If Cain's is revenge, if Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy sevenfold. Mm. So there we get this seven times seven, which in the Greek translation it's either seven times seven or seven times. Mine has seventy seven. Yeah, seventy seven. So, so it's it's got this historical significance, but it's an, in a vengeance context right. here. Well, now here the Lord is talking it's in a, a mercy, mercy, yeah. forgiveness context, and so it's it's an interesting number that Jesus says and. The way I take it, and I think it's commonly understood, is basically you never stop. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's no end to it. Yeah, the, my understanding of, of Hebrew numerology is that anytime you, you multiply a number by itself, yeah. it's significant, but then anything with a multiple of 10 is the idea of infinity. You know, that's why Whew. the... Yeah. Um, Hebrew math, boy. <laughs> it's why when you look at Revelation, you know, the, the hundred. We've come a long way 000. from the Hebrew math. Now yeah. we're in, we got new math. but <laughs> uh, The 144,000, uh, the 12,000 from each of the tribes of Israel, that doesn't just mean that 144,000 would be saved, but it's the idea yeah. of uh, multitude upon multitude, infinite. Yeah. And, and that's really the idea that's being got at here, that right. forgiveness is infinite you can never for those who are repentant you can never out forgive god you can never out ask god for forgiveness right. of the forgiveness available it's an endless well of forgiveness and and that's the beauty of this picture here it's like uh it, and it goes on to just explain what this looks yeah. like and and it's it's kind of lost in translation because you're like okay that one big thing you did that ten thousand what is it the ten thousand ten thousand talent the ten thousand thing you did and you asked god for forgiveness for that uh, which is equivalent, I think, of like ten million. It's it's a, it's an astronomical yeah. figure, something yeah. you could never repay. And you know, ten million may not seem as large now as it has in different times in history, right. but but it's an insurmountable figure. And and so you go to God with that big thing, and you're like, yeah, God could probably do that for me once. But the reality is, sin is it's not a it's not a once. Well, it's it's not an it's. What do, you, what do you call it? It's not an economical system with, with sin and forgiveness. Mm-hmm. But but there's, you know, this is something I hope you learn early on and we teach our children early on that every sin we commit mm-hmm. separates us from it's God. It's not a zero-sum game. Yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, it's not, not a finite amount. Yeah. It's not like me pushing my brother is any worse than me killing my brother. I mean, it's hard to say that from our human perspective, but that's the reality of right. what God intends us to be, perfect as I am perfect. and. Yeah. And so, so every day we literally come with a ten thousand talent yeah. laundry list of mm-hmm. sins that we're repenting of, and God says, "Yep, 
I did that for you. That's not yours to take anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, that's the thing is that the the first servant, he comes to the king. Um, when we're dealing with parables, kings are, I'm not going to say always, because as soon as I say always, there's going to, I'm going to think of an exception, but almost always God mm -hmm. or Jesus no. or some aspect of the, of the, the Trinity and the servant here, if there's ever a servant, it's almost always us because we are we are servants to Christ. We are doulos to Christ. And he comes to him and he says, I can't pay the bills. Mm -hmm. But if you give me time, I can't. And I think that's the, the thing that kind of maybe shows his his mentality. Yeah, you misunderstanding. Know, that, yeah, is he's like, well, I can work hard enough to, to pay this off. You know, I can, I, I just need more time. And you 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 talked about this and it's it's so hard for us to really comprehend this because uh, so a talent is twenty years wages. Ten thousand talents is what is that two hundred thousand years wages? It's it's ridiculous. So you can't you can't do this. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I think can get overlooked is the king because he he writes the debt off. He mm -hmm. forgives the debt. What does that say about the king and his ability and his standing that this 200,000 years worth of wages, mm -hmm. yeah, it's gone. It's whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the, the one thing I did read in preparation for this uh, this morning was powerful, and it, it, it presented an image that I had a hard time grasping at first, but talking about it now and just reading it again, it, it really fits. It, this master sets out, he's, he's a bookkeeper. Yeah. He's, he's going to settle accounts. That's his mm -hmm. job. That's his role. He's, he's making things square. He's, he's, he's a numbers guy, and he's, he's going around to settle accounts with his servants. So it's uh, not, just, um, not just this one account, but he's planning to do it to all accounts. And, and it seems like we get the first account. He began to settle. One was brought to him. And um, so when he's asked to forgive this guy, he says, you know what? I'm not a bookkeeper anymore. Yeah. Uh, and in, in the, the terminology that the, the writer used that I was reading was, was that he dies to being a bookkeeper. The bookkeeper part of him is dead. Yeah. He's no longer a bookkeeper anymore. And, and you know, he's in the, the mercy business, the forgiveness business. He's, right. he's a forgiver. He's a savior, if you yeah. will. And, and, and it's a great picture of what our God did. He died to become our savior. Mm -hmm. And and um, and then going on just to plow ahead. Yeah, this yeah. man would not die no. to being a, a bookkeeper. No. He would not die to the law. He when he was asked for forgiveness, he says, "No, the law is good, and you owe me this. Right. Even though I've been saved, I don't think you deserve saving. I'm going to keep being a bookkeeper." Yeah. And, and and that's a picture. And I think that's the a great way to take this life with Christ that we have is we are dead to sin. Yes. So. Yes, we think about that, and we should rejoice in that, that we are dead to our own sin, but now we're also dead to the effects of other right. sins against us. We leave it to the great bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We leave it to the judge that we all will give account of ourselves before. And, and do we say, yeah, I did this, or do we say, no, Jesus did this? Yeah. And that's the thing is, I think, um, you know, for me, this parable it shows the the tension and the duality of the freedom from and freedom to aspect. The first servant, he's freed from his, his debt. Mm -hmm. Now, what has he been set free to do? He's been set free to forgive others. Mm -hmm. Now, he doesn't do that, and that's where the, the, the crux of this comes in, is that yeah. you didn't do the thing that you were set free to do, so what was the reason that you were set free to do it in the beginning, you yeah. know? That if you want to hold others to this accountability, then guess what? That swings both ways. And now you're accountable to it as well. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, um, it, it, it is so Im impressive or so telling that the, um, the, uh, the verse 30 is the punishment that the unforgiving servant mm -hmm. imposes is the same... Um, punishment that he receives from the master and right and i think that that again is a telling thing and it's age old saying you know martin luther is probably the one who said it you know if you uh want to harm your brother if you want to 
withhold forgiveness in order to teach somebody a lesson. It's like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. Yeah. 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 Martin Luther didn't say that, but you know, that's what a Lutheran pastor says when they don't know who says it. So, um, that, that's, that's what's going on here is mm -hmm. the poison that he's, um, expecting to be for the other person, you know, punishing this guy, getting what he deserves from this guy. Now it's his, it's his yeah. to deal with. And, and I think that's, you know, when we pray in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not just a, it's not just a, a burden on us, but that prayer petition, I, I've come to think of it, and I, I really hope we can realize that this is us actually asking God to forgive others, lead us to forgive others. Yep. And, and in praying that prayer, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We're literally saying we forgive those who trespass against us. And we're saying it in prayer. And I think God answers prayer. And I think when you have those situations, and we all know of those situations, whether personal to our lives or people we know, where you, you come to this realization or people say, I just can't forgive them. But right. we forgive those who trespass against us is a prayer we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And God answers that prayer, brings that forgiveness yeah. through us for the sake of others. Whether we like it or not, right. it's just who we are in Christ. You know, and it's it's the the alternate language there that forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Mm -hmm. Like that's Boy. this right yeah. here. Yeah. You know? That we forgive our debt we forgive our debtors because God has forgiven our debt. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And one one last thought I got that was from the the one reading that I did before this. Have I mentioned I only read one thing in preparation for this uh, this this uh, study, but um, uh, Robert Farrar Capone, I should mention his name since I've uh, referenced him a couple times now, and uh, he, uh, he says his final point on this passage was that heaven is full of people who are um, uh, forgiven, Yeah, which is another way to say it, heaven is full of people who couldn't do it on their own. Heaven is full of broken people mm -hmm. who, but by the grace of God, and it seems obvious to say it, but it's powerful to realize out loud that heaven is full of people who aren't good yeah uh, they're good by the grace of god god makes them good in Je in jesus so heaven's full of of forgiven people who otherwise for that forgiveness wouldn't deserve to be there and then he takes it a step further and he says hell is also full of forgiven people yeah. hell is full of forgiven people because when jesus died on the cross he died for all he forgave their sins and the difference is whether or not you receive that mercy um, that God extends to you. And, and here this unforgiving servant is not receiving that mercy. Um, he's, he's, and he's demonstrating that lack of receiving that mercy by not extending that mercy. Right. And, and, uh, and then his, his final thought was, kind of gave me something to chew on. He said that this is the greatest sin against the Holy Spirit. This is the unforgivable yeah. sin when we don't forgive, when, when we stop the work of the Holy Spirit from going forth from us. And I've, and I've always kind of summarized the sin against the Holy Spirit as denying the work of the Holy Spirit, or which I, I think is another way to talk about mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. That we're we're saying, you know, that we that know forgiveness better. isn't for you. Yeah, we know yeah. better. We're we're in the place of God. It's yeah. literally what you're doing. So, good stuff. What else you got here? Anything? Yeah, but I gotta keep something for the sermon, I guess. All right. Yeah. Well, and you can you can uh, hear his uh, Pastor Rushi's yeah. sermon. Uh, the live stream service will be uh, Pastor Rushi's service today, and so he's going to be preaching on that. So look forward to hearing what the Lord leads you to say and yeah. uh, what he leads me to say at the uh, 1045 service in the gymnasium. So um, I, I do have an announcement. I'm going to yeah. throw it out here just to let you all know, um, letting the congregation know this morning, um, I've, I've received a call to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Bowling Green, Kentucky, um, so what that means is I'm leaving. I'm going to Holy Trinity Bowling Green, Kentucky. No, it's not what it means. So um, hopefully that caught your attention because what it actually means is now I have a call to Trinity Toledo here and I have a call to Holy Trinity in Bowling Green, Kentucky and now I'm in a time of, time of discernment to decide where um, I would like to serve, where I feel the Lord would have me serve. And so um, please keep me in your prayers. I'm, I'm going to go visit the congregation next week and um, spend some time in prayer and, and study of, of God's Word and um, hope to make a decision. I think by October 8th is where I'm kind of setting my, my uh, terminus for making that decision just to um, 
get ready to move on with life one way or the other. Um, yeah. But but uh, your prayers are appreciated. And if you have any comments, questions, or anything, let me know. I, I do intend to have kind of a, I think I might call it a call consideration um, conversations night. Um, in a couple of weeks. Is helpful. Yeah, deliberation is to a kind of an open house, open forum, town hall type setting where I'll talk through what the call process looks like and then maybe open it up to questions or comments if people want to share feedback. And, and if you want to do that in a, a private setting, please, please let me know. I, this is a good time. Um, whether I stay or whether I go, it's a good time for me to consider my um, role as a pastor here. Or elsewhere, and um, the the needs of the church here or elsewhere. So, so thank you for that. Anything else? No. Cool. We'll leave it that. Uh, you know where to find the stuff going on. And um, if you got any questions about anything we said, get at us. Absolutely. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.